Hi, this is Melanie of Pardesi Reviews, and I'm joined with Catherine of the podcast Polandine Pate and Apati. And this is a little bit different because we're going to be talking about an English language film. We're not going to be talking about a Malayalam film right now. <laughs> so, but Catherine uh, was raving about this film, Polite Society. And she urged me to see it. And I'm like, I have to talk to Catherine about this because it's so amazing. <laughs> So um, we are going to get into spoilers of this film, but the, the beginning of this discussion, we're going to try to be spoiler free for a little bit, and then we'll let you know when we go into spoilers. But this is an amazing debut film from director uh, Nita Mazur. And then the cast, they, there's two sisters. Uh, Priya Kansara plays Rhea, and she is from uh, Bridgerton, if you've seen that on Netflix. And then her sister, uh, Lena, is played by Ritu Arya. And it is <laughs> just a wild, crazy mix of genres. It has like martial arts fighting, there's a Bollywood dance number, there's a heist part, there's, I mean, there's action, there's comedy, it's insane. So um, <laughs> it, it's just so surprising. Now, this director, uh, Nina Mazur, <clears throat> she's from England, and um, she had worked in television. Now, she wrote the script for this film 10 years ago, but yeah. she couldn't find... Um, a production company that would let her really do the film that they wanted, that she wanted to do. I mean, they were kind of like, well, could you make the characters white? No. Yeah. <laughs> so this film <laughs> is about these two South Asian sisters, these Muslim sisters. Okay. So uh, Nina Mazur has had success uh, both. At, uh, she's been a director for the Doctor Who series. She's done a, a number of episodes for that. But also notably, she had her own comedy series on BBC four I believe it was anyway it's called we are lady parts and it it's about great. it is a comedy series with this punk rock band with these, all these a women. Muslim punk rock band a Muslim punk rock all women punk rock band and just reading the description of it was amazing so yeah. um, if I anyone heard, has a chance to go and to, to, to watch it do because it is so much fun and yeah. you'll see a lot of the same kind of touchstones in that as you will in polite society and particularly in terms of misconceptions a lot of us might have around what young muslim women women particularly in the west are like and what their right. concerns are yeah i mean it just the humor in this movie <laughs> I was laughing out loud. Unfortunately, I was alone in the theater because I went to see the very first <laughs> oh, matinee. I went yeah. to see the very first matinee. But this, you know, yes, you could wait for streaming on this. This may not come to every region. I don't know that it's been released everywhere yet. But it's out in the U.S. and the U.K., at least I know. And I would have loved to see this with an audience of women laughing their asses off because it was so funny and so some of the commentary just oh, so biting <laughs> like i just oh my gosh and i so, don't know where to begin writing a review because there is so much going so much. on in this film and it's so detailed and it's deceptive too because the one thing i wondered at the beginning was is this just going to be about the relationship between the sisters and the and the and the younger sister needing to confront the fact that her older sister is now getting married and moving on in her life. And, and if it had left it at that, I would have been profoundly disappointed, but I should have had more faith yeah. in the director. No, right. having seen We Are Lady Parts, um, I should have had I mean, more faith. Yeah, so the, the two sisters, uh, well, I should mention that when she finally found a production company, Working Title, which if you're not familiar, that is an um, English film company often uh, paired with kind of in, what we would call indie kind of films. And and they told her when that she shared the script with them, they're like, lean in, lean into the crazy, like make give it more. <laughs> and so that's certainly what, she has done here with this film because like i said i mean it just has action it has everything <laughs> and it, it premiered at sundance uh, in january of this year and and i just when i said that when you shared the trailer i was like oh my 
God, I cannot wait to see this movie. So again, it's all in, in English and it's centered around these two sisters. So um, uh, Rhea, who has the boxing gloves on, is the younger sister. Her goal in life is to become a stop woman. Now, her older sister, she's always, she's got a YouTube channel. She's always trying to get her older sister to help her film um, action things that she's doing for her YouTube channel. And um, her sister, Lena, is kind of going through a rough spot in that she'd gone to art school. She's extremely talented, but she's doubting herself and she has dropped out of art school and she just doesn't know what to do next with her life. And enter in... <laughs> The Shah family. So they go to a need celebration. They meet this family. And, um, and you know, I mean, it's not uh, like a strict arranged marriage, but obviously the the sh the mother played by uh, Nimra, I don't know if it's pronounced Buka or Bucha, but anyway, Nimra, um, the mother uh, playing Rahila Shah, you know, there, she's obviously her son is a doctor. She's she's on the lookout for an appropriate bride, and so there's this level of the film of the younger sister who's still in high school of like, no, I don't want my world to change. Like yeah. I have this intense bond with my sister. I mean, they fight, they they do everything together. Um, you know, they're so close, and the fact that her sister that things are going to change like she she's fighting it literally in every way that she can so it's just amazing and goes surprising directions like you could see it as just this amazing relationship between two sisters we don't often get that in films yeah. right yeah and it was really well done like the, oh, the whole so the well whole done. idea that you can be so close and yet literally knock down drag out fighting at the same time that really is that yeah. that's what a lot of sisterhoods are like right <laughs> your, your best friend and your greatest enemy sometimes yes. yeah <laughs> just i mean because they really just they have fights to the point like you say knock down drag out where the and you can see that this isn't the first time because the parents are just looking up at the sounds coming from the upstairs bedrooms and they're just like Okay. And, and, and when it finishes, totally deadpan, but clean up after yourselves, come on down. It's like, <laughs> like it's the most natural thing in the world for this family. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's just so many themes that are running through this film and so many commentary <clears throat> on um, the pressures of young women to marry the right way to, okay, you dabbled in college. Now it's time to move on to serious parts of your life to, uh, you know, and just, you know, especially Rhea, the younger sister, finding that, like, no, you're an artist. <laughs> like, you know, just, well, just... and Rhea herself, too, because everyone is nudging her from the school to her parents is nudging her to become a doctor. Yes. And, you know, it, this is the last thing in the world she wants. Right. Right. And, you know, she literally turns in a paper to a teacher saying that she wants to get an internship with a stunt woman. <laughs> Just the teacher's like, so, yeah, we're going to sign you up to have the internship with the doctor. And she's like, no. <laughs> and not, well, I mean, I, I, I was just going like, to say not only that, but you have these amazing friendships between uh, Rhea and her girlfriends too, right? You know, I mean, I, I just like, it was an embarrassment of riches on relationships yeah. with women, like women friends, your sister, just, we don't often get all of that in one film. Oh, yeah. I interrupted I, you. You were about to say something. No, no, it's, <laughs> I, I love the fact that, uh, what's the name of the stunt woman, um, Edith and um i love the fact that she's i mean even when she's talking to the teacher she's like best of british she's not chosen some from from like the hong kong industry she could have chosen a michelle yo right. but she chooses someone from the uk um a reasonably well-known stunt woman you know right who has worked Marvel in like, I think the Marvel. So she's not, you know, flash in the pan. She has, she has an idol that is sort of appropriate for a young English British woman. Right. Um, I, I, I love that little detail as well. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was great. <laughs> just, just the poster on the wall. She's constantly yep. emailing her and that's sort of court kind of our, um, 
you know, our way for her to have sort of a diary, sort of an inner dialogue for her, for us to check into where she is as she's writing these emails to yeah. her, you know, this stunt woman that she would just, you know, she's such a fan of and would want to meet. And, she, you know, and she's kind of giving her update while well, I'm emailing you again. My sister and I are fighting and, you know, just like, and, I and mean, you don't so, have to answer, but you know, right, right. She just and, needs, she needs someone to confide all this stuff in that isn't her sister. Right. Uh, yeah, or her friends, is, or her friends who I mean, she has, she has uh, issues with her friends at one point in the movie too, and I just love, um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, just there's just so many great scenes. I mean, we're talking about the relationships, but the action, okay, like the action, and literally, there is a whole Bollywood number <laughs> that Rhea does at the wedding was amazing okay that was just amazing on its own and and so much action and there's heist and there's all of these all of these genres mixed in that you don't normally see women get to do like all women right not just like oh yeah there's the woman sidekick or it's an Anjali Jolie movie so yeah of course she gets to do that with all the men no <laughs> and our villain is a woman and our villain is a woman too yeah. you know and um I mean I thought that was pretty pretty ballsy to take you know Mardala from from Dave Das now um, yeah. Nita Mudzur has said she loves Dave Das and that's why she chose it but can you imagine choosing that song as as know. you know a, a dancing at your sister's wedding and learning I thought she pulled it off really well too she did you know? she like, really did <laughs> I know like she, she gets to the point where she's even doing like she's she's not doing exactly the thing but she's doing like gunshot to the head and it's like so into that moment it was so great just oh so my great. gosh it I, I like when the music started i'm like See, whoa we're going here <laughs> oh i don't know are we like having trouble connect when the music started i'm like oh my god we're going here like this is crazy yeah. <laughs> this is crazy and you so, think you think it just come keeps coming like thing after thing after thing and you think what else and it right. all works it's all it all works i i just coming out of the fear theater i just it was just like this glorious euphoria like wow i mean first of all i mean just seeing this new talent of this director this is her debut film and even watching the credits and seeing how many women were behind the camera a uh, woman cinematographer, you know, on and on and on. And not that there weren't, you know, men involved too, but just um, just seeing this team of women that were behind this film too was also incredible. Okay, now I want to get into details. So from this point on, we are going to be talking about spoilers, but if you haven't gotten it already, go run, run do not walk <laughs> to see this movie. Yep. And, if yeah, it's, and not it's opened... It's open yeah. in Canada as well. So hello, yeah. fellow Canadians, please go and see this. You will not be disappointed at you all. You will not be disappointed. And if it doesn't come to a theater near you, look for it when it does come to streaming because it's it's a not-to-be-missed movie. Yeah. Okay. One thing that um, I, the uh, director was um, interviewed on a Women in Hollywood podcast, and I was listening to that um, earlier today, and one amazing scene – is that uh, Lena, okay, first of all, she's engaged and she has a sleepover with her, her fiance, <laughs> Salim, and then breakfast with her future mother-in-law. I'm like, and it was just like, yeah, this is just what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but heavy the fact, flow heavy flow the <laughs> fact that she wakes up and she's gotten her period she has to admit that to her fiance not she's like no you don't understand heavy flow and then that <laughs> she has this whole the, her mother-in-law to be is the villain but yet the one positive thing that she does in the entire movie is just treat the fact that she has her period and has stained the sheets. It's just, well, it's just normal. And that just proves you're fertile. Which is an important point in this film. <laughs> um, Very important point. Oh, my God. You know, God. and I actually love that because yeah, you may know, I mean, I come from a generation where you weren't even told anything about this until it happened. I thought I was dying the first yeah. time I got my period. I was so frightened. And 
in you know she talked in that podcast about the shame around women having yeah. periods and I am so grateful in my lifetime to now see this as something like this is natural. This happens to women. There's nothing dirty or shameful about it. And we can talk about it. Right. Maybe not over the yeah. breakfast table would be my choice. But even <laughs> even the fact of doing that is just normalizing everything. Right. The other thing I love about it, though, is um, they do play with that idea of you know shame and horror particularly when the, when the the two friends go to deal with the bodyguard that's that's guarding the sister at the wedding and they just look and she, they're like she right. wanted some tea because you know she's on her period and they look at each other like heavy flow heavy and the flow. look on his face <laughs> The look on his face. It's like you know they're they getting past the bodyguard who's packing heat. He's got a he's got a, a pistol on his waistband. And they're just like, yeah, we're just gonna snow him by period talk, and he's just gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> Go through, go through. Like I'm I, sorry, I, it's, yeah, I love it's that. fabulous. I, it's I was absolutely like on the fabulous. Floor laughing at this. I mean, because it's like I mean, I was just like, I was just yeah. The director was talking about how some of her inspirations were the teen comedies that she grew up watching. Okay, well, what were those all about? They were about young men, right? Yeah. Young men dealing with whatever you know, man, you know, making like masturbation or having erections at times that you don't want them. Like creating yeah. humor and just showing that. This is a universal thing that everybody deals with, right? But that, like, this is this one of these last frontiers. Like, to to me, you know, the director. I just loved what she was saying in in this interview on when the podcast. Just, I she just wants to normalize this. Like, every woman goes through this. Why can't we just discuss it? It should just be a normal thing to discuss. I just thought that was I was, yeah. I was floored when that, that yeah. scene happened. I, I, I loved it. Like it was just again another one of those little details in a film so full of incredible details. The right. other character I love too is I'm gonna call her the school bully. Yes. Um, yes. Who comes around to help Rhea and her friends. Um at the end with with the heist and she's got her own issues as well right um but the fact that they can come together you know in this moment again it's nobody is really um black or white in this even our villain yes. i mean she is she is more to to black but we discover that you know both she and ria are very similar in the fact that they're fighting patriarchy and they're yeah. fighting patriarchal notions around right. women and particularly in the South Asian community. Right. Um, and so, I mean, what an interesting Yeah, I mean, the whole of... thing is that, that she wants to be cloned so that her clone can grow up in the society as it is now and have the freedom to do what she would want to do like yeah, which she didn't have <laughs> having been married off by her father and you know right. you know not in a great relationship right. um i mean so it, yeah i learned that the director's mother is actually a gynecologist and so yeah so i, I just i love that you know the the, the whole arranged marriage thing like it, it's just like this layers of this, right? That yeah. the the villain wants to marry off her son, who is a doctor, a geneticist, okay? But so like on the face of it, everyone is saying, why is the younger sister Rhea having a problem with this? This is normal life, right? But the fact is that her sister, then if she marries this doctor, she's not going to fulfill her dream of being an artist and she's going to move to Singapore the night of the wedding yep. and then be gone. Right. And, and so everyone is just treating Rhea like, okay, you're just, you're just out of control and crazy. But then, you know, I mean, it's like on one level, that's real life. That's real families. That's real sisters because life does change when some yep. one sibling marries, moves away, whatever it, Yep. It's never going to be the same as the two of the two sisters being so close, living in the same house, right? And that is, you know, that is something that all families go through, all sisters go through. But but then <laughs> taking this to the other level, like, okay, you know, what is this this thing of of um, in the South Asian community wanting to marry to have the children, 
right? Like, I mean, they've added this layer of villainy on that she wants to clone herself, that they do all these weird testing, that there's this lab in the basement or whatever, right? But at a certain level, <laughs> right? Like on the surface level, you know, Rhea, the younger sister is like, this is horrible. We're just, you know, look at all these women that this Celine guy is looking yeah. at, right? He's just trying to choose between them. Okay. Like how many times are you know? I mean, on, on it, you know, and and her father is trying to explain to her, listen, it's not the arranged marriage of old, but we're trying, we're trying to, you know, match her up with someone who's serious, so she doesn't oh, waste that, her time. That conversation with her father. Oh my God, I was on the floor laughing so hard when he described. <laughs> You know, it, 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 it more as like a financial brokerage thing where they're trying to get the best deal. Um, and it's like, it doesn't make it much better. I know, it's the but horror on her face. And she's like, oh, can you be saying all this, Dan? <laughs> you, know? you know? I mean, you Maybe know what I mean? value added. <laughs> yeah. oh and, 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 you know, I love the, uh, the, the scene... Um, where, where that Rhea and Lena's mother goes to this sort of luncheon or something with all these ladies. But the way that it's filmed, it's almost like we're seeing some summit in The Godfather or something. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it just very dramatically filmed with this overhead circular camera going around. Yep. And, 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 you know, you see, like, this, this also these class differences, right? Because Lena's fiancé... Like it's it's these um, they live in the, an enormous mansion. We see this yeah. part the Eid party with all the wait staff and whatever. It's a completely different level now. Rhea and Lena's house is very nice. Their father is obviously in finance or something, right? Like, but the awkwardness of the social interaction among the mothers and asking, "Oh, how's your daughter in art school?" when they probably already know that she's yeah. dropped out, right? Well, like and this some of them do because there's that scene in the beginning where she's frustrated. She goes to the Chinese takeaway and gets like a whole Peking duck, and she's sitting outside on the curb eating it. As <laughs> two of her mother's acquaintances pass by, and it's like, "Oh, yeah, not yeah. doing so well, are we, dear?" <laughs> right, right. I mean, just. Um, yeah, I mean, it, she's going through, Alina is going through a hard time, yep. but the pa the parents are just kind of like, oh yeah, well you dabbled in that and we're done, right? You know, and, and that's, they're not trying to necessarily be mean and Rhea is fighting against that in every way. Mm -hmm. Like, no, don't see us that way. <laughs> you know, just, but, oh you know, simply gosh. the, simply the fact that Rhea's sister has decided to drop out is probably the sign to her parents that okay this was this is she wasn't serious enough about this so yeah. she's done right right so you know we let you have your way on this and and now let's move on right right and you're of an age and people are asking so okay you know and it's just yeah i mean like what is normal in every day in another movie is taken to like 11 <laughs> Yeah. This movie, everything goes to eleven. I and I was it. like, I was fascinated the second time because I watched it several times because I had a, access to a screener. And the first indication we kind of get that something's awry is Lena has a flashback of something, and she thinks it's just a dream. Yeah. Like when I saw that, I went, "Okay, this film is no changing. Let's go. Let's go." Um. And the fact that we realize that at that Eid party, they were collecting DNA information on all the young women at the party. Yeah. You don't notice it the first time around. The second time I went and watched it, I realized because they had like uterus scans. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. what happens is they all walk into the entrance and lights flash. And that's what's happening. And it's just it's just thrown in there as a tiny little detail. Right. That and you all, don't all, think all about. of these all of these um, wait staff are plucking the the glasses out of the hand before they're finished. Yeah. Right. And yeah. she and and Rhea finds in the lab all of the glasses of the women who were at the party with their their names and that and and Salim has put um, all the you know genetic information into his computer to choose the most um fitting fertile young woman to you know be to the be the vessel his, for his mother's clone. his mother's clone yeah 
Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Like I'm, where I'm saying that now, and I'm thinking. <laughs> Yeah, like that oh, is sort of jaw. Like if you just yeah. say it at face value like that, it's so jaw droppingly bizarre. You think, how could it ever work? But it does, and it and it works in part because all of these little details are dropped. Um, I mean, one let's, of let's, things, talk, let's talk. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I was just going to say one of the details again. Woman writer, woman director. Okay, so when. Uh, Rhea has broken into the house. She's seen some new things, <laughs> right? And then when she goes back, the, <laughs> our villain, Rahila Shah, like, is like, oh, I was going to get my nails done. Why don't you just come in? It's okay. It's okay. Having a spa day. Right. And then, and so they're just manicure. But then comes the waxing, <laughs> which is like this whole torture scene. Like, oh, and now we're going to do the bikini wax. Like, she's doing the villain monologue while these attend white attendants are holding Rhea down and, and doing the, the <laughs> wax strips on her arms. Oh, my God. Like, just the layers of commentary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hilarious, but it's also the commentary that these women are having to wax their, um, their arms and whatever for these standards of beauty. And also that, yes. Having a bikini wax is torture. Like, I mean, it just, I, I mean, you know, it, we've laughed at like the 40 year old virgin has, an, you know, a waxing, but I've never seen one that was specifically like a, a women's torture scene. Like, oh my God, it was, it was epic. It was oh, just yeah. Just epic. <laughs> I love oh. it. <laughs> I mean, how many times can we say we love this film? Like, honestly. I, know. I mean, when when uh, I said to Catherine on our group chat, I'm like, I do, I'm, I'm going to go see it. And she's like, I've already seen it three times. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's a great thing. They gave out a screener link. And so you were able to watch it multiple times. And yeah, I mean, I could definitely see see why it's so enjoyable. And like you said, there's so it's so rich with detail to be able to watch it again and say, look how they're setting this up. Look how they're setting this up, and giving yeah. us little little clues along the way that something is a little off. Um, because like I said, until you know, we everyone else is just looking at Rhea like she is a crazy person that she's just an over emotional teenage girl. Um, because on a certain level, yes, a teenage girl could react out of bounds Absolutely. to what, what is happening, right? And Absolutely. the change in her family and like, no, you're not taking my sister away. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> One of the things I really like, too, I actually, in, in my review of it, I said it was it was full on Bollywood inspired masala. Like yeah. an era, like we, like, you know we know and one of the little details that reinforces that are the titles because they're in english hindi and urdu and yes. you remember like the film the great masala films from the 70s you always had the titles in or transliterated hindi into english yeah and hindi and urdu like again just that little detail thrown in yeah, we're, you're right. There are chapter the, titles. It's not just the beginning yeah. titles that we're talking about, but there's chapter titles of different, you know, as we go through the plot. And then, and you're right, it's like these big yellow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fabulous. The yeah. other thing I love is that f the big fight confrontation scene between Rahila and Rhea. Yeah, I have a picture. Um, like, like it is yeah. just, just epic. <laughs> like, just look at Rahila's the look on her face and just like this martial arts stance. <laughs> really, it and is epic. in full wedding linga. Yes, which is fabulous because a lot of times when we think of martial arts, particularly done by men, but also by women too, because you've got things like um, Kill Bill where you've got very streamlined outfits so that you can see the action. But this is like a, a callback to, to Wuxia, to films like um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yes, yes. With the long flowing outfits. So you get a kind of grace and elegance in the fight scenes. And right. that's what the wedding lenga does here. It's, right. I mean, like, I didn't gorgeous. know that I wanted to see someone do an aerial kick 
you know, to someone's face in the air with her green skirts just flowing everywhere. It was, I mean, not only was it awesome, but it was gorgeous. <laughs> like, yeah. All yeah. The, like you're saying, it, it calls back to crouch. That's a perfect analogy. It calls back to those flowing robes of something like Crouching Tiger, where it's, it's, it's not only cool action, but it's absolutely gorgeous watching yep. it happen. Now, I some mean, of the, you know, some of the scenes when she was practicing that kick and she, she wants to do it again because she wasn't captured for her YouTube channel. And, I and then I'm like, you're doing that. it on a concrete, you're doing it on a concrete garage. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, the five the five forty kick is so key to the whole film too, because it's Rhea's hero's hero journey. Yeah, because this is the thing she wants to master is this five forty kick, and every time she tries it, she ends up you know splayed on the floor, yeah. and face, when she finally lands floor. it, it's in this fight against her villain. Right, and we and that, that that's sort of like we know that's that's an obvious kind of setup for our our heroine hero slash heroine to have something they need to master, and then we cheer for them when they when they finally master it. So yeah. you know, again, one of those tiny details that just keeps coming back, and we know she has to do it eventually. Yeah. We know right. she has to do that kick, yeah. and she does just right. brilliant. Right. And, and it's also that all of these women are banding together and that, you know, her mother, <laughs> I'm going to get spoiler, like the villain is going on this whole thing and has grabbed the gun and whatever. And then it's her mother <laughs> place, <laughs> takes a wedding chair and smashes oh, her across that. the back. I absolutely I love loved that. it. Like, it's just like, like, no, you're not doing this to my daughters. You know, you it wasn't the dad. The the, I mean, key point. It was not the dad or an yeah, uncle yeah. that jumped in. It was the it was mom. mom. Yeah. Oh, I mean, just... every detail is just so pitch perfect and so feminist. But like any, I'm, 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 we're talking about how great it is as a woman to watch this film. But anyone could watch this film and absolutely love it. If you liked films like Scott Pilgrim that are just kind of this over the top, almost comic book action kind of, you know, mixing of comedy and action and all of that. It has that vibe. I'm just telling you, it has that vibe. And if you like that, you would love this. Well, all of these extra husband... details, if you if you know the song from Dev Dust or whatever, but you don't have to know that. It's just fun Easter eggs for those of us who do. You can enjoy all of this not knowing anything, having any background or knowing anything. It's just glorious to watch. Well, my husband watched it the first viewing um, with me and he okay but he's not he's not a total newbie to bollywood <laughs> he's not a total newbie to bollywood nor is he a newbie to you know chinese martial arts films because we right. you know we used to spend our saturday nights watching hong kong action films um so no he's not a newbie the first thing he did say though was oh my god this is like scott pilgrim yeah. Yeah. and yes he is more open to you know, sitting down with me and watching i'm just gonna say let's watch this film and he'll go okay but he loved it and honestly, the two of us were in tears laughing the first the first time through. Yeah. Um, yeah it, so really, I think, yeah, as you said, anyone can go in and get something out of this. Right. But I, I just, I mean, I, I love that we're hearing from these new voices because I, I felt like some of the stories that we're seeing are so stale we're always seeing this coming of age of men. We're always seeing, you know, how many times have we seen that, right? Like, or yeah. if, you know, in the action film or whatever, just, it's all, it's so often so same. And like, you can just point to the bullet point. Okay, now we're going to do this. Now this is going to happen. Okay. You know, I'm not saying some of those aren't fun to watch, but it was just glorious of, this is from a women's perspective. So therefore things are different. Things are fresh. And um, it, yeah, some of the things I could have, it, it could have expected to happen, but other things were like, oh, look how they did that. That's so, you know, like I was just, just gleeful and surprised at how certain things came together. Like, have we seen heist? Have we seen people try to smuggle somebody out of a hotel room together <laughs> with a, with a uh, bell, bell bottom noise, you know, card or whatever? Yes. But it was just like, it was, 
different and fresh and just, you know, the way her friends, you know, I loved, I loved them and how they were just on to do any little caper. <laughs> well, there's that whole sequence where they sneak into the gym oh my to God. steal Salim's laptop. Her and white they're friends, in disguise. Her white face when she goes to the locker room and everyone's, and everyone's naked. It's like, okay then. <laughs> Oh, oh my God! <laughs> but just just the fact that they are they are just so supportive that they will say yes. Let's break into the men's locker room at the gym and, and steal the laptop and yeah. get the information off it and find the dirt. Right, <laughs> and then like... I love it that there wasn't any. Right. Yeah. I mean, like he yeah. has the computer in the lab or whatever, but they're expecting to find like, okay, he's a stalker or he's got tons of porn or whatever. Like there's the laptop is clean. I just <laughs> love that detail. Like they went through all of that for nothing because that's the same thing. Salim on paper is perfect. the perfect fiance. He's rich. He's a doctor. He's going to take her to a tropical location. He's going to take her to Singapore. Like she'd never have to work again if she didn't want to, yeah. but she probably could dabble in her art if she wanted. Like, you know, it's all perfect on paper. And yet Rhea's like, there's just something off with him. Like, you know, and he is always, he's not mean to Rhea. He's not mean to the younger sister. And, you know, she's stalling for time, but they have this whole conversation and he's not, acting all exasperated with her he's just yeah. like i'm trying to figure you out and why you're so upset you know like um i you know i really love your sister right like and he's just so and he's, just he doesn't it. even he doesn't even blink when she turns up like she takes her disguise off at the gym right and, and sits down to have a juice drink or whatever with him because she's trying to stall for time with the laptop thing and he's just like okay she's here we'll chat yeah yeah, but, I'll try. Yeah. I'll try to smooth this over so this wedding can happen. She's important to my fiance, so okay, <laughs> you know. I mean, again, like I just, I just loved all of that. How everything, you know. I think this also is um, probably influenced by you know, Get Out, like Jordan Peele's kind of, mm. uh, kind of, you know, where where there's one character that sees that everything that looks perfect, right that there's something off about it, but no one else can, can see that off quality to it. Um, yeah. But I just, I just love all the themes. Like when you sit down and you think about all the commentary, like I, I laughed my way through it and enjoyed all of it, but like, look at the commentary, right. Yeah. You know, I'm rescuing my sister from being in an arranged marriage where she's going to give up her dream and her career. Like in a sense, at an essence, that's what this film is all about. Yep. Like, no, don't go that path. Be, you know, be your true self. <laughs> you know, like if you can't, I mean, she says, like, if you can't pursue your dream, how can I pursue how mine? How can I pursue mine? Yeah. <laughs> and what can anyway. we say? She is the fury. She is the fury. I am the fury. <laughs> I am the fury. <laughs> It's, it's so oh I like how many how many superlatives can can we heap yeah. on this film? Right. So uh, you know, I, I just like this is like a five star movie for me. Okay, like I don't normally I don't normally give out stars. I normally, you know, there's good things, there's bad things. Even if I didn't love a film, I try to find something positive to say. I think you can tell from this that like there's I, I don't have any negatives. Like maybe there were some plot holes or whatever, but I don't even care because I was on such a fun roller coaster ride no. that I don't even care because it was just glorious. The whole thing was just glorious. So I cannot wait to see what else. I hope this film is a success um, because I want to see what else this director writer comes up with because oh, and I, I am, I am going to seek out her, um, her television series. We are lady parts because this sense of humor that she has um, I'm, I'm definitely and like she said in her interview, she grew up watching things like black adder and faulty towers. I mean, it has just that really funny British humor that I love. Um, and I'm, I'm really, I mean, if it's again, you know, and you're saying it's amazing. So I'm sure. It oh, is. it's good. It is yeah. so good. And she said in this interview that she was really glad she didn't get to make this movie 10 years ago, 10 years ago. Yeah. That she had 
gain this level of success so that she could really make the movie that she wanted to make because she would have had to compromise so much. You know, feature filmmakers, debut filmmakers, they go through a lot to get that first yep. movie made. And to make that leap from TV to film is still a big leap. And I'm really glad that she was able to fully give us what she wanted this film to be, you know? And so, Absolutely. because yeah, I mean, more is more. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to this movie. It's going to be a hard act to follow, but I, I have every faith that she has the, the talent and the ability to do it. I mean, if she's Absolutely. been sitting on this story for 10 years, God knows what other story she's got in the cabinet that uh, she's ready to put on. And, and yeah, I mean, talk about passing the Bechdel test, which is about, can you have, uh, you know, how, does a movie pass the, um, the maxim that, two women characters talk about something other than a man, right? And because so often it'd be a discussion of a boyfriend or, or whatever. Uh, I mean, <laughs> this one is in space. <laughs> it's like, here, you want an example of one? <laughs> right here. Well, anyway, even that little yeah. moment near the end of the film where they've, they've escaped in the, in the car, in the, con the American convertible, <laughs> this yeah. massive car in the, in the middle of London, and they stop to get burgers. And they're in the wedding linga, sitting there eating burgers and in fries. In the diner, yeah. It's like, you know, did you see that like, kick? Did you see the kick I did? <laughs> like, they're, they're, not, they're over the man at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It, it was just, I, I loved, um, you know, and then I'm not getting, I don't know, we're spoiling this whole part of spoilers, but I did love that there was a voice cameo of the stunt woman. Yes. You know, that's the end of the film is not just that they escaped this whole wedding fiasco, but that she is going to get to meet her, her hero. And, and work and, with her. And work with her. Right. And, right. and so it's just, you know, it's just perfect. It's just it was Look just at how big my grid is. I know. Like, <laughs> like, honestly, like this yeah. film is so much fun. It was amazing. So I was so glad that you told me about it and that you pointed it out to me and that you reminded me that it was coming out because even though I didn't get to see it with a full audience, it was glorious seeing it in the theater. If you can see it in a the theater, definitely try to yep. try to see it with a crowd. Take your girlfriends and um, but definitely check it out on streaming when it comes in the months to come if you don't have it in a theater near you because you, this is a film not to be missed. Thank you so much, Catherine, for joining me for this fantastic discussion um and we are going to talk more about other topics in the future because i always have a good time talking with Catherine about things all right thanks so much for joining me again you can find um Catherine on her podcast polandini pate talking about malayalam cinema but also she has also posted a written review of this film that i will link in the description below all right thanks Catherine, for joining us and you can find me on uh, twitter at pardesyyt and on instagram at pardesy reviews thanks, thanks. mel